Good morning. Hello, hello. All right, I am just testing this out. I am not going to watch myself on Facebook. This will confuse me. I want to make sure that it is streaming properly. I like the color of your hair. No, thank you. Thank <laughs> it you. Suits you. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Happy Friday, Carly. We are in Facebook world. Perfect. So happy to see it. I'm going to give a couple minutes for people to join. This feels like a great day. Feels like good things are happening. For anybody who is watching the replay within Facebook, um, we do have a workbook. Um, I believe we posted about that. So there is a workbook. If you want the workbook, um, you need to register through the link. So I'm hoping somebody from the team can put the link in the Facebook comments so that you can register and get the workbook sent to you. Okay, that is something that is available to you. And we are going to keep this live for a replay for 48 hours. So if you, for whatever reason, are not available at this exact time, you can watch it at your own leisure in the next 48 hours. Um, yeah, and get the full benefit from it. I am so excited to be sharing with everyone today in December, the last month of 2022. Look out, we have big things coming. Get my thing up right. Can you guys hear me all right? Just a thumbs up, yeah, perfect. Okay, there's a lot to cover. So I'm gonna give us two more minutes and then we will hop into it. Make sure that you, if you are like myself, you have your workbook printed and available for your notes. Because we're going through this a little quick, the replay will be useful in case you feel like there's something you wanna go back to. You can watch the replay, go to the place where you need that information. And then it can kind of walk you through it. We are going through it a little quick and I do say, this is stuff that you can take action with this moment while we are on this masterclass. That is definitely possible and available to you. So you can do that right now. If you're someone who feels like some of this um, information or knowledge is new to you, you might need some time to kind of digest it. So then in that situation, I would say, take your time, like write down your information for yourself. And Write down the information for yourself and come back to it. This isn't a race by any means, but sometimes we can get sparked, right? We can hear something and all of a sudden we have this like realization, hey, that might be for me. Hey, that's something that I have been avoiding or that's something I can take quick action with. So this is very personal to everyone. I'm not expecting everybody to take away the same um, ahas or the same kind of results. This is very individual and that's what I love about this work. This is how it changed my life and so many people that I know that I've worked with that have been in the same industry. Right, what time do we have? All right, I'm gonna get started to be conscious of time. Again, the replays will be available for 48 hours if you need to uh, catch up. Okay, I am so over the moon excited to be here with all of you. My name is Kate Hansen. And I am a confidence coach. That is just a title. I'm not really big on titles. My whole purpose in life, my everything that has built up to this moment, even since I was a young girl, is that I desire to help others reach their potential and to create an environment where like-minded people can really flourish where people can kind of come and bring their own genius, bring their own excellence, learn from each other, and then see what is possible. And when you expose yourself to people who are taking chances, when you expose yourself to people who are willing to get uncomfortable, you won't believe how inspiring it is, how that can catapult you forward in and of itself. And we, I have created a program, it's called Truvu Mastery. And the Truvu Mastery is a play on deja vu. So your Truvu is a vision. It's a vision for your future. It's your desired life, how you really want to live your days. And because time is just a, a construct of, that we've made up, 
it's really meaningless. So when you can create a vision for the life that you want, then it gives you all the details of how to get it, how to achieve it. And sometimes this is just a matter of aligning with our values. You know, we get so caught up in the replay or the replay in the default, right? Where we, every day we do the same things. Everything becomes very repetitious and we kind of lose sight of that. We have so many options available to us. There's so much color and texture and opportunities out there for us. But if we have our head down and we're just focused on doing the same thing every day, we can miss it. We can miss that there's even a better option out there for us. So always being aware of all of the abundance around us, even that in itself will help. All right, so the workbook, I'm going to kind of go along with it with my notes because I can talk about this forever and ever, and I want this to be impactful. I want you to get value from it. So we're gonna start with step one. So what I'm saying here is that we've got five steps, all right, to where next. This really was spurred from, we're going into the new year, a lot of people, we talked about this, um, a couple of people I met with the other day, and it's called the pandemic push. It really pushed people to look at their life differently, to realize, you know what, life's too short, too precious for me to just keep doing what I'm doing without intention. Am I really happy with what I'm doing? Maybe I should change something up. But with that comes a little bit of nerves or perhaps like some sort of resistance of but that's unknown to me. I don't want to dive into unknown. I really like the comfort of knowing. <laughs> and so this is the beauty of what we're doing together. It's like you have a net. You have people with their arms linked around you saying, we've got you. This is your time to fly. This is your time to take a chance. You are worth it. So let's go. And um, when I grew up, both of my parents both of my parents lost a sibling, a brother in their 20s and in they're in their younger ages. And it was a shock for both of the families. And so what I was raised with, my sister and I were raised with is tomorrow it could be your last day. Are you proud of today? What if tomorrow, that's it? Did you do what you came here to do? Are you living on purpose? Are you proud of yourself? The last words you spoke to someone, are you okay with those being the last words? So having this awareness my whole life and not in an unhealthy way, in a way that really made me be intentional from a young age, because you're not promised tomorrow, I could be seething mad at my sister when I was younger, but that little seed was planted and I could not go to bed without making sure that we were good. So this is kind of the idea of even when I'm saying where to next, I want you to have that idea when you are leaning into this. When you are getting vulnerable with yourself and opening yourself up, guys, this is about being proud of ourselves. And it's different for each of us. Our wants are different. Our needs are different. This isn't about comparison, but I want you absolutely to use each other as inspiration. So the first step we have here is claim the result you deserve. Or I would say claim the result you desire. And what this is about is that we're not always in control of our circumstances or the situations we find ourselves in. I'm not being naive to think that life will be perfect the second you have perfect thoughts. Life happens around us. But the most amazing thing that I learned that changed everything was that you are 100% in control of how you choose to look at that situation or that circumstance. That's where you can regain your control, your sense of empowerment. Life can definitely be difficult. There can be things that come at you that you think, what, how will I ever, how will I ever get over this? But I'll tell you, the hardest things that happened to me in my life showed me what I'm made of. When I look back on them, I am dang proud of where I am. A lot of the things that came up, for anybody who's not familiar with my story, a lot of the three pillars that kind of developed this version of myself that got me to create the Truvu Mastery program, to create this coaching community, this mastermind community. When I was younger, being sexually assaulted by someone I didn't know when I was in high school. The other thing was discovering that I had a brain tumor. It is not cancerous. I am uh, healthy, thriving, but at the time, the symptoms that came with it were so unknown. And when you hear that you have a tumor, a brain tumor, your identity shifts. 
When you're sexually assaulted, your identity shifts. I can tell you firsthand, but what happened was I let those happen without my input. Those were reactive changes to my identity as opposed to me being empowered with, I choose who I am because of those situations. And the third pillar is my daughter, when she was born, she had health issues for the first four years of her life, in and out of hospitals, in and out of doctor's appointments, and nobody had any answers. And I start to doubt myself, start to think, what kind of a mother am I? All of these thoughts start going through my mind, and it's starting to change my identity again. Who are you? What matters? So what I want you to really see is that when you don't do it on purpose, when you're not intentional, you're going to trust other people. You're going to trust other people who tell you what those things mean about you. And that can hurt. That's like having a, a, an open wound and somebody just sticking their finger in it because they didn't experience what you experienced. So when you're working with me, when you're in this space with me, I want you to know that you are the all-knowing. You are the most powerful person in your life. And that you get to take that back. You get to choose for yourself. So when I'm saying claim the result you desire, I want you to pick something specific here. I want you to pick a result that you've always desired, but you just, it always seems to be just out of reach. This could be finding the love of your life. This could be getting out of debt for once and finally being an overflow where you have excess cash. This could be getting that position that you've been working for for years and you never seem to be the one to get that promotion. This could be making the leap and starting a new business because you're not believing those beliefs about yourself anymore, about mistakes made in the past or about what other people told you you could or couldn't do. So whatever your result is that you've desired, but you've always been like a little resistant, like, oh, I, it's always there. It's just nagging at me. I can't get rid of it, but I'm not ready. I'll wait. Remember, you're going to remember Kate said, but what if tomorrow's not there? If you don't have tomorrow to rely on, it's a little bit, um, I might be using the wrong word, it's a little strong, but it might be a little ignorant to assume I'll do it when I'm right, when it's the right time. I'll do it when someone else tells me you're ready. I'll do it when somebody else gives me permission. So many years, especially in my corporate position, for eight years I was in a corporate position, working my little tail off, waiting for someone to go, you are ready. You are good enough. Wow, you've got potential. I waited and waited and waited. And the longer I waited, the more I convinced myself, you are worthless. You are not enough. You are not as good as. Guys, playing a victim, it serves a purpose. It serves a purpose. It feeds us. We get something out of it or we would stop using it. And I didn't realize it while I was in that career. I had other circumstances that caused me to leave it. But my God, I wish I knew what I know now then. Because that Kate would have showed up different. All right, so claim your result. Choose what it is that you want. All right, take out the thoughts of greed or it's too much or I don't need that much. I've got enough. I'm not, if I, if I want more, it means I'm not grateful enough. Stop it. Go back to that six, seven version of yourself, six-year-old, seven-year-old version of yourself. And I know this very well because I have young children and young nie nieces and nephews. They do not worry about that when they ask for what they want. They are not concerned about whether or not you think they are worthy, whether or not they think that it's like too much money. They just tell you, this is what I want. My daughter wants a house with an indoor pool with a water slide that goes from her bedroom. She asked for that. Well done. Bravo. I'll work on that. I'll try to find that. Let's be that. Let's be like her. Get rid of all the rules, all the reasons not. Claim your deserved outcome that you want boldly write it down that's your first step okay to make desired change we need to align with awareness awareness of what we're currently thinking because we're choosing the results we have right now so it may not feel like it we're like but Kate I'm stuck no no you're choosing that and I'm going to help you with that awareness action every action you take is saying something every action you take is a decision you've made and then accountability. And accountability to me used to be outside of me. I need someone else to hold me accountable. I need someone else to make sure I meet deadlines. No. That little voice inside you is like, you know how many times you promised me that you would get healthier? 
know how many times you promised me that you would follow through on that thing for just you and then you didn't? I don't trust you anymore. So this accountability is getting back to you being accountable to yourself. And again, look out. I think of like all-star athletes or Olympians. There's no way they have a person on them. Like they have coaches, believe me, and they've got outlines. I get it. But it's them that gets themselves out of bed at crack of dawn to go and do things that so many people would never do. That's because they are accountable to them. Their relationship with themselves is tight. That's what I want for all of us. And it doesn't mean you have to get up at the crack of dawn and do whatever crazy things they do to stay in the shape that they're in. You got to do what's right for you and what you need. Okay. So to make a desired change, you need to have an alignment of your awareness, your actions that you're taking and your accountability. I'm just going to share a quick example as well. When I was having the issues with the brain tumor, what I had, it kind of gave you the same symptoms of somebody who was pregnant. So it's on the prolactinoma. It's called a prolactinoma. It's on the pro, um, oh, I'm not gonna think of the word right now. Anyway, the point is it gives you symptoms of being pregnant. Not getting into too much more detail, given that little piece of information, I then went on to use that for about 14, 15 years of this is why I'm not healthy. That was the little crutch that I needed to give up any efforts of consistently holding myself accountable to being healthy. Well, I can't, I can't help it. It's not me. It's that tumor. I can't, you know, the meds aren't working. Nobody gets me. I'm different than everyone else. So, you know what? I'm just going to eat whatever I want because there's no point anyway, because I've got that thing. See how every excuse serves a purpose. It gave me an out. Since I learned this information, I'm like, holy smokes, how long have you been lying to yourself, girl? Stop that. Now I get rid of that. And guess what? I'm having better health outcomes from medication, all my blood work. And all I changed was my thoughts around it. I'm no longer a victim to not being well. All of a sudden it's like, that's not a big deal. You've been living with it. You're amazing. Keep going. It's a perspective. Same with money. Oh my God. The reason I can't seem to get ahead is because I don't get paid enough. I don't get paid enough. So this is just my truth. I relied on that for so long. My overspending, did that have anything to do with not getting paid enough? No, that was my choice. My not getting a job that paid me more, that was my choice. We are always empowered. We can use our excuses to hold us back or we can get rid of them and acknowledge them and get rid of them. All right, so claiming your result, I'm just gonna say, um, Samantha, can you let me know when there's like 10 minutes left in case I'm running a little bit over? Thank you. All right, step number two, I want you to label your angle. So I kind of touched on this in the first one, but our perspective is just that it is only our perspective. It is not the only perspective. It is not a fact. It is just what we choose to look at, how we're looking at it. So this might show up for you if you're like, well, I don't know. I don't know what my current perspective is. Well, whatever it is you want, you might be having these types of feelings. So this might be, this might guide you to that result that you want, that you're feeling like you never seem to achieve it. You might be feeling stuck. You might be feeling cornered. You might be feeling like off track. I don't, I don't know what's off, but something's off. You might be feeling bummed out or you might be feeling overwhelmed. Overwhelmed was a big one for me. It showed up by just everything agitated and got worse. And I want you to identify this perspective or this angle that you're taking and name it because sometimes we're not aware that our personal point of view is simply a perspective. So when we identify, where's, where's, that, where's that thing that we are not getting the result that we want? What are we gonna call that? So if it's in your relationship, it's in your job, maybe it's like, um, I'm trying to think of like, if the promotion's not there for me, I'm not good enough for a promotion then you could just say something along, I want you to name that situation. It gets easier to name it the more details you have. So it's very specific, but I want you to figure out, okay, what's my angle? So maybe it's that only men get ahead or my boss prefers my colleague or no one seems to see me when I'm out, when I'm on dates, I'm invisible or whatever, like name 
that issue that you keep telling yourself is the reason you're not getting the results you want. I want you to name it because it is a point of view. It is not a fact. So this again might come up to you when you're in a situation where you know, here's the outcome I'm gonna get again. I'm gonna get overlooked for that promotion or I'm gonna start a business and nobody's gonna support me. It's gonna show up when you go, that's just how it is. This is my truth. Something's off with me. It's something I'm not doing. I'm not like them. So for a long time in the corporate career that I was in, I wanted to go right to the top. I wanted to run that company. I was so full of zest. And then as I started working with different people and other people would get acknowledged or other people would get promoted, I would start to think, I'm just not like them. I'm not good enough. Like they know something I don't. They're better than I am. And the really strange thing is that since I've started doing this work, now when I'm talking to people, what I get is I'm not like you, but I'm not like you, Kate. So now I'm that person on the other side. And I'm going to tell you, it feels a lot better, but not like when you want everybody to succeed, but it feels a lot better than being the one going, I'm never enough. So I want you to really do the work. And if it doesn't happen in this like little tight hour, take the time afterwards. And I want you to name your perspective. What is that thought I keep thinking about the situation that I'm in, where I'm not getting the result I want? If you're thinking it's not in your control, even Kate doesn't get it. This, this specific situation is out of my control. It's where I live. It's who my parents are. It's how I was raised. It's how much money I currently have. Whatever it is, I want you to write it down. Give it a name. It is just a perspective. It is your point of view. It is an angle. So your current experience equals your current angle. In quantum physics, this is what they say. Whatever you say to yourself before you look at something determines what you see. So I'm going to say that again. In quantum physics, whatever you say to yourself before you look at something, it determines what you see. So this can really get into if, say, you're there's somebody that you're always arguing with, say it's a family member. Before you're about to have an exchange with them, you're already telling yourself, here we go. Here we go. Buckle up, roll up my sleeves. It's about to go down again because I know they're going to say something about this situation and I've got to defend it or I've got to defend myself. And then what happens when you get there? The argument ensues immediately. What if instead you chose a different belief before you arrived? If you told yourself a different story, today's different. Today's a new day. The type of person I am, I can just release all resistance. If somebody has a different opinion than me, then bless them. I don't need to get their approval, get them to agree with me. And then when you go into the meeting with that person, that's what you're going to see. You going, okay, that's, your, that's what you think? Okay. And guess how fast that person will change when they see you're not giving back, you're not fighting. It, guys, I'm, it's as... It's as small as us changing our thoughts that can change everything. So we're choosing our current results with our current angle. And if that's true about quantum physics, that whatever you say to yourself before you go in determines what you see, I want you to choose wisely. I would only choose things you want. I would only choose empowering outcomes. So again, with some, I'm going to give you a couple more great questions to ask yourself before you name this situation before you name your angle. How am I choosing to look at this situation? Or how am I looking to look at this circumstance? Where am I coming from? Where am I coming from? Because you might be like, you know what, I've got tons of reasons to say why it's the way it is. Ask yourself that. And then I want you to identify it and name it. So label your angle. This is about just calling yourself out. <laughs> Here's what I'm telling myself. Here's what it's all about. All right, this is going to be your current view. Now we're going to move into step three, designing your new approach. This is very exciting because things can change rapidly to your benefit. 
in a way that makes you feel better, healthier. That wellness that everyone talks about is possible for you. It's possible and we all deserve that. There's no need to live in resistance, to live in anxiety, to live with this sense of not enoughness or something's off for me or that's just how it is. That, that isn't needed anymore. We can let go of that belief. So you're going to explore other angles, right? Now you've named it. You've named your angle. Now you're going to choose some more uh, empowering perspectives. This is just you with you. So I highly recommend you journal it out. Ask yourself, okay, what are some other perspectives I can take on this? And a really great exercise to do if you're feeling like a little bit stuck in your viewpoint is to say, okay, well, um, how would my parents look at this situation? Or if there's like a family member or a friend or somebody in your community that you always go to because they have the best advice and your soul knows it's right, what would they think of this situation? How would they see it? Or it could be um, somebody who's in a position you want to be in. You don't even have to talk to them. Just ask yourself and the answer will come. How would they handle this situation? What would they be saying to themselves if they were in the same situation? You can tap into their conscious, their unconscious thoughts. You can tap into their energy. That's why we have creative minds. So let's use it. And it gets you out of your own head. So I love to think about what other people's perspectives would be because I can immediately say, oh my God, my husband, when I get all serious and intense, intense on any subject, this is where he makes jokes and he does all this stuff. And then he tells me something that's super creative and I, what? So I always like to go to him. What would he say? What would he think? Because we're totally different in that way. But think about somebody that you love and respect and trust. I don't want to know what the bully thinks about this perspective. I don't want to know about what the other person in this dialogue you always have with yourself about who they are. I don't want their perspective. If it's not empowering to you, you can just let that perspective go. All right. This is our world. This is our choices. We choose who's at the table at our boardroom to help us make these decisions. So I'm going to give you a little example that really brought this to the forefront for me. I um, am an artist. I love to sketch and paint. I want to find a really good example. So I'll, um, let me see. This should have been thought out beforehand. Oh, well, okay, here we go, stapler. Stapler, an old school stapler. So this art class had all of us, I think there was like 10 of us and they had a wall and they had this watering can, this watering jug on a little cube, a black cube. And they said, okay, find your seat. So we all had these little benches that were all around kind of like a half circle around the, the art in the middle. And he said, I don't want you to sketch what you see. And I was really bummed because we were a little late because of snow, all these excuses. I was against the wall. So I was the last chair on this half circle. So I had a really bad angle in my perspective. So I would be getting like this angle. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to paint that. So I'm like, instructor, can I move? I'd like a better angle. He's like, no, this is part of the art. It's that everybody has a different perspective. That's why art is so expressive and individual. And it was like, boom, all these light bulbs went off and all this awareness came to me. This is exactly what I teach. This is your current angle. That's all it is. You might not like it. You're like, ooh, I'm stuck. This is how it is for me. I don't have enough money. I'm not pretty enough for that guy or that girl. Like whatever it is, that's just your current perspective. Why don't you change seats? Why don't you go a little bit closer by looking at these different ways of looking at something and get a nicer angle, one that you feel like, hey, that serves me. I can sketch that. I can live there because I like that. That's what we're looking for. OK, so him showing me that my art, even though I did a little painting of like the nub end of this handle, I'm so stinking proud of that painting because I made that handle as beautiful as I could make it. And so it's about what we make of the situations we're in. We're choosing how we look at stuff, guys. Let's choose differently. Let's think about different perspectives. And by doing that, this is us designing a new outcome for us. So I want you to come up with three different angles. I want you to brainstorm three different angles that you could take looking at the exact situations you just named. Okay, what are three other ways I could look at this? 
be creative, wild, nuts. Again, remember, we're going back to that six or seven year old creative mind. Come up with any wild reason why the situation is the way it is. One I love is this is happening for me. Why is this happening? What kind of money is going to come from this? Oh my God, what cool people am I going to meet? What direction is my life going to go in? Is this what I've been dreaming of? Like, that's the kind of thinking I want you to have. You got to change it around. And it sounds silly and it sounds a little juvenile, but until you actually put it into practice and then you see, holy smokes, it changed the outcome because it changed how I approached it. Because I believed that better was out for me because I believed more was coming for me. I was approaching everyone differently. And now all of a sudden I have people coming, seeking me out. I have people coming and connecting with me. Now I'm like, how did I attract that amazing of a person? That person just gave me a tip that changed everything. That person just showed me something that my heart needed to see because I didn't know that perspective existed before. So when we do this, you're going to come up with three different angles or approaches that you can look at the same situation. Within the Millie Evolution workshop um, masterclass that I offer, um, this larger community, we like to mastermind. So every second week we come and if there's something that I'm getting a little stuck on, my perspective's a little stuck, I come and I bring that question to the mastermind. And the beautiful thing is that everybody has different experiences and backgrounds. Everybody brings something different to the table. So they might have a look at something that you're doing and go, well, I would do it like this. And it cracks open a whole new level of possibilities for you. There's a benefit, guys, in not thinking it's always on your shoulders to have the answers, to know everything. That's where we need each other. We are human beings. We need interaction. We need to rely on each other. The reason we're progressing and we're learning and we're innovating is because we're all pulling from each other and we're learning from each other. So we have a mastermind. And we also expand our awareness when we see each other taking chances, putting ourselves out there, trying new things, failing and learning from it. This is available to everyone. All right. So again, if you're feeling like, okay, this is new creative work for me, Kate, I want to be there with you, but it's like not coming to me immediately. I'm going to say, after we get off, walk around, change your space. When I have clients call me, they're really upset. They're in that like bad energy where it's just not serving them and they're feeling stuck and they're upset. My advice is always get up, move, move. You're recycling the same thought because you've been sitting in the same spot. Get up and move. Go for a walk outside, go to a window, just get some air in your lungs, move around and watch. Like when you want to remember something and you walk through a doorway, I learned that walking through a doorway, your mind clears things for you. That's why sometimes you can't think of like, what am I doing? Why am I over here? So if you are trying to remember something, don't go walking through doorways. That's just my tip because I found it really helps you stay. But other than that, walk through doorways if you need a new perspective. I'm going to forget what I was just thinking about. Okay, what do I want to know now? How do I want to look at this differently? Move your body. All right. So I want you also to, when you're thinking about these new perspectives, these new approaches, okay, you're looking at that situation that you've been kind of not loving the outcome. You're going to think about different ways to look at it. And then I want you to really take the time with yourself, take a deep breath and really imagine, okay, if that new perspective is true, if that's available to me, what else is true? How do I feel if that new perspective is true? Like something's happening behind the scenes. I'm actually just gonna leapfrog that position to go to a different one. I have unexpected money coming to me, so this job doesn't even really matter. It's gonna move me into a new direction. If that's true, how do I feel? And by doing this work, by sitting in each of them and really taking the time to think, okay, if that's true, how do I feel? I want you to choose the one most empowering, the one that you're like, that's it. That's the viewpoint I need. Okay, I want you to take that one and I want you to move as if it's already true. I want you to feel as if it's already happened. This is your new angle. This is your new approach. 
And for those of you who have not rolled your eyes and moved away from this exercise, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you because growth can feel foolish. Growth can feel messy, vulnerable, embarrassing. But those who are bold enough, courageous enough to go through it, they're the ones laughing in the end because they're the ones who are growing with intention. So I'm very proud of you. Thank you for sticking with me. I am not trying to convince you of me. I'm trying to convince you of you. I'm trying to convince you of how much potential and power you have in your own mind. That's, that's accessible whether you ever work with me, whether you're ever part of any community, whether you're off living by yourself in the forest. That is always available to you. You are so supremely powerful. It's shocking. If people knew the power you held, they would be bowing to you, cheering for you as you walk through the room, right? As we should for each other because we are so full of potential. So we're going to move on to step four. As I said, I could talk forever, but I'm going to keep my promise to this hour. I want you to outline your path. So with this new perspective that you're going to have, I want you to notice how your energy shifts when you have kinder thoughts. So when I am thinking, I'm going into a situation, I'm predicting the outcome and I can feel my energy dropping and I know here we go again, I immediately stop myself. Honestly, this works for me. I go, oh, I just got to go to the washroom. I go into a washroom, I take a breath and I think, what do I want? What do I want the outcome to be here? Okay, I'm going to assume that that's the outcome I'm going to get. All right, and then with that new perspective, it's going to give you a game plan, but I want you to write it out. I want you to outline your path. So if that's true, what do I have to change about myself or what do I need to develop into? Who do I have to be for that to be true? I have to be compassionate. I have to be open-minded. Perhaps if it's career directed, maybe I have to have certain skills. So if it's true that I grew my business from having three employees to having a hundred, okay, what does that feel like? Well, what does that mean is true? Need a bigger space. Perhaps you need different people around you. Perhaps you need to take a new course to teach you a new skill. Um, if you've always wanted to public speak, okay, I'm on stages. People are hiring me every month. I've got a new place to go and speak to. How's that feel? Oh, it feels so good. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, well, if that's true, what skills did I need to learn? I guess I could work with a voice coach. Well, you know, when I see myself on stage, I'm looking so fit. So I guess I should create some sort of healthy routine for myself. Maybe I'm hiring a trainer because I've got a stage I'm going to be on in a month from now and I want to have a little bit of sculpt in my arms. You know what I mean? When you see speakers out there when they've got the lines, um, that's my one of my personal ones that I like to think about. So I want you to think, okay, well, if that's true, if that's available for me, okay, what do I need to line up? Because it's coming. I thought of it, so it's there for me. It's available. How can I set future me up for success? What does she need me to do right now? And then that's where you start to make your plan. You start to write out some ideas because you've got a creative mind. I don't care if you say I'm not creative, I'm, I'm a numbers person or I'm a whatever. You, everybody's creative. Everybody has creativity within them. That's how you decide how to decorate your house, how, what to wear in a day, how you're going to talk to people. That's all taking your creative imagination to figure out what you want to do, how you want to reflect yourself. And as you're diving into these plans and you're thinking about, okay, now I'm taking public speaking courses. Okay, how does that feel? Okay, now people are starting to call me uh, a speaker. Now people are starting to call me um, an author. Okay, well, how does that feel? Now I want you to double that feeling. It's all energy, this is just your mind. Okay, you're feeling really good, double it. Okay, magnify it, make it bigger, exaggerate that feeling. How good does it feel? I'm an author. I'm an author. I'm seeing my name out there. People are giving me book reviews. Keep expanding it, expanding it, make it bigger, make it more elaborate. Have fun with this and just feel your energy rising. And I'm telling you, when you get that excited, you're taking action because you can't wait any longer. Like you want it now. 
So there's no timeline on this. There's just like, okay, if that's what I'm doing, okay, what do I have to be today? And some of this can be, you just step into that version of yourself now. I'm going to walk with my shoulders back. I am an author. I'm a world-renowned speaker, motivational coach or motivational speaker. Walk like it. Talk like it. How would somebody making that kind of money show up? Are they going to show up in their jogging pants and a hoodie with a cap every day? Or are they going to be walking proud, dressed with intention? Are they going to be smiling at people? Because you never know when the next client might want to hire you, right? So that's another thing is that you never know who you're going to meet and you get one chance at a first impression. You could get on an airplane, I'm telling you from firsthand experience, and meet somebody who changes your life. Are you going to be happy that you put yourself together, you put a little effort in? Or are you going to be feeling a little bit crappy because you went looking like a bum because you didn't realize the person beside you had such impact? Please don't mistake this for please spend tons and tons of money on yourself to improve your appearance. You know what you need to do to make you feel good. Maybe that's like wearing your hair down instead of up in a messy bun all day. Maybe that's just how you stand with your shoulders back, the eye contact that you make with people. It's different when you're intentional. You're always leaving other people with the impression of increase, all right? That's just a standard that we all set for ourselves in this community. There's nobody gonna interact with me that leaves feeling worse about themselves ever. Not from my doing. Okay, so outline your path. What does this mean for me? If I'm this person, okay, what, is that? what else does it mean? Why am I so happy? Why am I loving my days so much? Where am I going? Who am I with? Where do I spend my time? Where do I live? Like, just go for it. Just drop all that stuff down. It's all the, it's all the hints and the tips of what was meant for you. It's all been there for you the whole time, just waiting for you to reveal it. When you practice this perspective, you make yourself available to it. Because what you think about before you go somewhere, right? That's what you're going to see. You can ask friends of mine. There's times when I got on a plane, I'm like, you just watch the person I'm going to sit beside. They're going to want to work with me. They're going to be the best connection I've ever made. And then I get off the plane and we're sharing information. And my friends are going, are you kidding? I expected it. I don't care how many jokes I see online about, oh, the person on the airplane who talks, 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 and they put their headphones in. That's not the person I'm going to sit beside because that's not what I'm attracting. I love people. I love variety in my life. I want to learn about everybody. So we're going to get what we expect. Expect the best for yourself. If it doesn't look like it's happening for you, get excited because something better is coming. Bigger than you could have imagined. Work this dream, work this perspective backwards. This is you creating your true who. If all of that's true, what else? What skills do I have to have? What actions am I taking? It's better to have a good plan today than putting off having a perfect plan. Because you might think, holy smokes, this is my big goal. I'm going after it. And then you get there and it implodes in front of you. And from it imploding, you meet a new person who's like, oh, this is what I do. And you realize that was my calling. I was meant to meet this other person. Everything is always happening for you. Always. You just have to have your eyes open for it. The last step, guys, step five, create accountability. So this can be easy or this can be hard to implement, you choose. Choose if you want the hard path or if you think this is easy. It's another great thing that I've done as I keep stretching myself. And when you stretch yourself, it can be uncomfortable. Sometimes I have to go back and remind myself, what if it was easier? What if I didn't have to make it so hard? Because it's been ingrained in a lot of us that for you to be worthy, you have to go through the hard. You don't deserve a beautiful, flourishing business if you didn't struggle first. You don't deserve a massive bank account unless you hustled for it, right? That's the lies that we tell ourselves. So I love to come back to, what if it was easier? What if there was an easier approach to this? I heard another coach once say, 
that commonly in a corporate kind of industry or situation, people who cut corners are frowned upon. It's like, oh God, so lazy. Like always cutting corners. The truth is, this was a business coach actually when I was in my corporate career. Those are the people we need to look at, look for because they make things more streamlined. They find ways to get rid of the monotony that's not necessary. We get so caught in our routines that they feel safe, so we protect them. And when somebody tries to change them, we get our backs up. Sometimes that perspective that they have can actually save you time, energy, or money. Actually, when somebody is saying something to you for your improvement, for your benefit, and you get resistant, you feel like frustrated with them, check that feeling because that might be you holding on to old ways that aren't serving you. And I'd say open up and hear them out. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's the smartest. Everybody can learn from each other. Everybody brings value to the table. So accountability, you decide. I'm going to suggest we all make it easy on ourselves. Whether you are committed or just interested in improving your life is going to be a big difference, right? Because when you're just interested, you're only going to do it when it's convenient. When you are committed, you are going to do it when it is uncomfortable, when it is difficult, when it's scary, when it's yucky, when it hurts. You're going to avoid it or you're going to go through it. And I can tell you, I put, I always say a yes before I can back out. I have stood in front of people where my knees knocked so hard that people could hear it. I had to hold the podium in front of me as it shook around while I was talking because I was so scared. I'm probably most proud of that presentation than any other one I've ever done in my life. Because everybody left the room looking a little scared, not wanting me to look, look me in the eye. Well, it's a handshakes way to go. You, you stayed upright. I was so freaking proud. I, I was like crying, jumping around the room. I didn't die. I didn't die. I didn't die. Like, it's all our perspective. Then I was like, I love this. I want more coaching and public speaking. I want to get out there. I want to talk more. What? What if I live the rest of my life with that comfort little fear? I don't public speak. I don't like to be in front of people because one time in grade five, I cried and the teacher laughed and everybody laughed at me. Like, what if I stayed there? I would miss out on my whole passion and purpose in life. You are doing that in some capacity for yourself. There's something you're doing to keep yourself there when the, that little voice inside you is like, come on, let's just try. And all of the successful people I've talked to who have had like quantum leaps in their business and they've had massive success, we all laugh because we have a common thing that all of us in some way have said, I didn't die. Like literally that's our bar. I guess I didn't die, so it's a huge success. But if you're not doing things where you're shocked that you're still standing, then try it. Stretch yourself, you are worth it. We are here to cheer you on and say, hey, I got you. I'm getting messy with you. I'm getting bru bruised and falling down, but I'm getting back up too. Look at us go. Those are my people. That's my tribe, the people who are trying. They say like the voices that you hear all the time commenting on what you're doing, they're in the stands. The voices that matter, the people who are on the court with you, the people who are in the game, that's whose voices matter and they will never criticize you because they know what it takes. It's 10 to. Thank you. All right, so this is going to be again, making a commitment with yourself. So one final exercise I'm gonna get you to do here, you're gonna do your best to just throw yourself in, right? You're gonna be committed because tomorrow's not promised. So you gotta be committed today. And you're gonna write down, what are three things that I need to say no to for my new reality to be true? Three things I'm gonna say no to. And after you've written those, I want you to write down three things I'm gonna say yes to that perhaps you've been saying no. Three things you're gonna say yes to. These are equally intimidating if you're being serious. But you will notice when you commit to them, you write them down, you're gonna feel your energy shift. You're gonna be proud of yourself. 
So another way to hold yourself accountable, find somebody you trust, find a coach, use me, use myself, use Millie Evolution in our community, or find some accountability buddy in whatever industry or area that you want your results in. Find somebody who can hold you accountable that you can trust, that is only simply there to hold you accountable, not to have input, not to say anything that deters from what your mission is. Somebody who believes in you. Borrow my belief, and I'm always available. We have a Facebook group, the one that we're streaming this in, Kate Hansen Co., always there. Always there to pour belief in you and to show you the potential that I see. Because it's there. Whether you see it or not, it's there. This accountability is reminding yourself that you're just building that faith in yourself. So that little voice inside you that's like, I don't know if I trust you yet. I know you wrote down those three things you're going to say yes to. I know you wrote down those three things you'll say no to, but I don't know that you're going to follow through. You haven't before. Every time you take action with intention and awareness, you are going to start trusting yourself more. And it feels so good. It feels so good when you keep your word with yourself. And when you follow through with something, like I want you to cheer for yourself. It's like, yes, girl. Yes. I, I reached out to that person that I was really scared to reach out to, but I did it. We're not celebrating what they do, what they say, what the outcome is. We're celebrating that I took the freaking chance. I did it. I put myself out there. That's what we're celebrating. And if you keep doing that, it's happening. It's happening. Just give everything around you time to adjust to your new perspective because the world plays out as you expect it. So if you've been expecting all these years for your outcome to be struggling financially, always one person behind or whatever you're telling yourself that isn't serving you, give the surrounding environment and people time to catch up with your new perspective. Don't take it as proof that it's not happening. Take it as proof that it is. Okay, because we have five minutes, I just wanna say, um, if anybody has any questions before we hop off, please put it in the comments in Zoom or in Facebook, and I will do my best to answer any questions um, that came up from today. But the last thing I want to say in the additional notes, I have something for myself. With uh, today's masterclass, if you feel like this is something I want to do, I need more support. I need more information. I want the accountability. I'm offering a 48 hour bonus, a fast action bonus of adding an additional month. So the program that we offer, Millie Evolution, this is a six month program. So this is the environment that you just marinate in. Belief, possibility, creative imagination, shared experience, collaboration, all of it. That's available for six months. And if you join in the next 48 hours, then you get an additional month, the seventh month. I also want to say that if this is something that's kind of piqued your interest, but you're not really sure what it's all about or whether this is definitely for you, then I'm going to say to um, you that there are links we're going to provide you with in a follow-up email within the Facebook group where you can book a call um, with someone from my team to learn more, ask questions, see if there's an alignment, see if this fits for you. All right, so one of the team members is with us this morning, Samantha. Samantha, can you give a little wave? This is one of the queens who's been in my life for the last, I think, almost three years now, which is mind boggling, and uh, has been knee deep into this material and this awareness with me. We have seen each other grow and stretch, and it has been an incredible journey. So Samantha is an excellent resource um, if you are lucky enough to have time with her either through voice messaging, texting, or like messaging, email, or if you want a quick Zoom, she's available to answer some questions or to help you out, all right? But when you reach out to us, we will set that up for you. I hope that you really take the time to do these things, to do this work. It's the thinking work that so many people don't spend the time doing, so they're living on autopilot. They're living in a reactive space. They're letting the outside world dictate their truth what's possible for them. And it's not going to have any alignment with your purpose or with your values if you just let outside things kind of push you around. It's like being in a storm in the ocean, the waves are gonna batter you, right? But when we're intentional and we're in the driver's seat, 
nothing, nothing can harm you. Nothing can knock you off course. And I'm talking hard things. I already shared the things I went through. They used to be the chains on me. They used to define who I was, what I was capable of. Now, they are simply what catapulted me forward, what fueled my change, which made me realize none of those things ever determined who I was. When I go back to Kate pre all of those big life changing things happening, that's who I really am. And that's a girl who's going to keep trying, who's going to get messy, who's going to be creative and wild and colorful. Oh, I got a question here. Days where you struggle, are there days where you struggle shaking off self-doubt even after trying to shift your perspective? What do you do? That's a great question. Is it Rasha? 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 That's a really great question because absolutely. We cannot control the circumstances or the surrounding things that happen to us. And there are times when even I don't want to have the right perspective. I want to wallow. I want to let it out. And sometimes for me, it's crying and saying like, this is so crappy and, and this happens to me and why is this happening to me? But you know what? The important thing is my turnaround time is faster. So where that used to take me out for months, I'm telling you months, like mental health breakdown, stress, like I wanted to go on stress leave. I never did, but like the mental health aspect to this is so big that people underestimate. When you're not living in alignment with who you really are, what's really possible for you, that creates dis-ease, disease in our body. So whether that's from stress, anxiety, fear, when we let ourselves stay in that space, it's just so unhealthy for us. And so when I used to have something happen and take it as a blow of like, this is how worthless I am. This is how bad I am at everything I try to accomplish. This is why nothing happens for me. I would live there for long, long amounts of time until somebody outside of me would say, hey, Kate, you're worth something. And then that would give me that little boost of energy to keep trying. Now my turnaround time, even if it's like a couple days, I give myself that, I give myself grace. This is hard, Kate, that was hard. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that happened. That's not what I wanted. And then I'm telling you, I get a good night's sleep, have a nice warm shower. And I think, okay, how do I want to look at this? And I feel better. I bounce back and I'm seeing my results come quicker. Because yeah, life isn't about results. What I mean by that is just like the, the feeling that you get when you're in a good feeling, that's what I get back to quicker. Does that answer your question? Perfect, awesome. Thank you for asking that question. That was a really great, great question. Um, Cause I used to think that you have to be perfect. Like you can't struggle, don't struggle, don't show it. Other people depend on you to stay strong, always be positive. And guess what? That's the exact same issue I was creating before the burnout that comes from believing things that aren't true. So the struggle often guides us. That's telling us what we really want, who we really are, what's off. Okay, maybe something needs to change here. And I'll tell you when you change yourself to expect changes in your environment, certain people, they're gonna go out of your life. Some won't even tell you why you just boom, they're gone. That's because they're no longer in alignment with you. They were in alignment with the person who had excuses, who lived in suffering, lived in victimhood. They're just gonna go missing because we attract who we are. So when you believe in more, when you believe in a healthier mindset, you're going to attract people of the same. When you believe that you're abundant and that you've got money all around you, money's available to you all the time, you're going to attract people who've got lots of money and believe that it's always out there. So choose wisely what you think about before you enter any situation, you're going to get what you think you're going to get. All right, so this is the end. The replay will be available for 48 hours. If you want to connect with someone from our team, let us know. We will get you in touch. And otherwise, I'm also available. If people want to message, put in the comments. I'm happy to answer questions. Actually, I'm just going to pop to Facebook to see if any questions came up. There's a quick second. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm going to leave it at that today. I want to thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time, your energy, your openness to hear this out. 
You are so worthy. Your potential is limitless. I hope that whether it's with me or whether it's another path that you stay in touch and you tell us about all of your successes and how your changed perspective opened up new doors for you. Because I know that's available to you and I'm excited for you to try. Take care of yourselves, everyone. I love you so much. Have a great Friday. See you later. Bye.